Hello, everyone. Today, I've got with me Wendy Barlin. Wendy, how are you? Great. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks for taking a few minutes out of your day to chat with me. Wendy is a CPA, and in her member profile in the tagline, it says that she helps business owners not just to make more money, uh, but to keep more money. And I think that that's a really interesting distinction. So hopefully we'll we'll get into that in a little bit uh, more detail as we go here, because I do think that that's, that's a valuable thing to think about. So as is our tradition here with these member spotlights, uh, I'm going to put Wendy on the spot and I'm going to ask you to shamelessly just give us your best elevator pitch. If, if you and I just met for the first time, I was like, Wendy, so nice to meet you. What do you do for a living? In 60 seconds or less, what would you say? Nice to meet you. <laughs> I help service-based business owners across the United States make more money and keep more money so that they can support their families, support their team and build their communities. We use proven techniques that are money back guarantee work every time. And we look forward to helping you. Now you just piqued my interest. That's really, that's really interesting. I did not expect you to say money back guarantee. Um, and then prior to that, the fact that you use proven techniques, you know, that that's enough to pique my curiosity or where my mind goes is, okay. I'm a huge fan of money back guarantees. I was in a meeting yesterday where somebody said, oh, I worked with someone like you and it didn't work. I said, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. And did the professional give you your money back? And she said, no. And I'm like, well, therein lies the problem. I offer a money back guarantee i put my money where my mouth is if i say i'm gonna do something and i don't i give you your money back that's interesting that's really interesting i like that i like that angle uh because it takes the risk out of it for them you know right. um and it's not like you're offering some kind of um you know black box type of service like what you're doing is quantifiable right they're they're gonna know absolutely and and the onus is on me to only work with clients that i know i can help Okay. Yeah. Cause if you're putting money on the line, essentially, you're not going to take yes. on someone if you're not confident Correct. that you can do it. I like it. That's pretty deadly. That's a good one. All right, cool. Well, let's go into our next little section here. I'm going to ask you three questions, uh, two of which you provided me and one of which I'm going to throw you as a curveball, and we'll see what happens with it. So, uh, getting into the first one, what makes you different from other CPAs, which I think uh, is a valid question. There's a lot of CPAs out there. So how do you, how do you stand apart? For me, the most important thing is honest feedback. I don't tell people what I think they want to hear. I tell people the honest truth and I'm only teaching you what I personally have experienced. I came to this country with nothing but a bag of dirty clothes and everything I have and everything I have learned has been my way. And so some people don't like that they want me to hold their hand and be kind and be sweet and i'm not i'm going to be honest and on some days we're going to have hard conversations my other big tenet of personal value is to never charge by the hour it makes absolutely no sense the slower i work the more money i make like, that's crazy so everything i do is on a flat fee basis with a value attached most of my clients either are on a subscription model or we talk about money right up front. This is what I'm going to do. This is what it's going to cost you. What do you think about that? So that we get money out of the way and then we can get to work. And I never, ever charge for phone calls or emails. To me, that is so unprofessional to ask somebody, how are you and how is your business doing? And then send them a bill <laughs> when in that conversation, I can truly help. I need that information so I can be an advisor, but I'm going to bill you for that. So That's I'm great. a big fan of flat fee, never hourly billing and honest answers. I like it. And I think that that's a big part of why you and I get along so well so far, uh, just because that's part of the language I like to use when it comes to first gen entrepreneurs, like my newsletter, it's no frills, man. Like, let just tell me what I need to know so we can cut to the chase here and I can, I can move forward. I don't, I don't need uh, warm and fuzzies. I just need to know what I need to know. Basically. Right. I'm not, I don't need to make my clients, my friends. 
I need to help them so they get tangible results. And, and so sometimes those are not easy conversations to have, mm -hmm. but they're important. And I feel too often people aren't getting the real truth answers that they actually need. Yeah, that's interesting. I also like to the flat rate thing, because uh, that kind of keeps with your theme of having skin in the game. If right. you're uh, profiting by working more slowly and inefficiently, uh, then the kind of the more accounting issues I have, the better off you are. Basically. Correct. Isn't that yeah. awful? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Good deal. Well, I like that. Um, so let's go on to our next one. You ready? How do I know if I have a good tax advisor? Now, this is a little juicy because everybody's got one already. How do I know if who I'm right. working with is actually? And I love this question because I'm not the tax advisor for everybody. Like we just said, I got, there are people I can help and there are people I can't help. Right. And so very often the conversation I have is, I'm not the person for you, but let's see if the person you have is a good one. And one of the most important things is that they listen. Do they ask about you? Because this isn't about them. This is about you. So are they asking the questions about your risk tolerance, your life, your goals, your intentions? That to me is critical. The second piece is that they're not getting you huge refunds. If your tax advisor is getting you huge refunds, I know that feels like they're a magician, but actually all they're doing is having you overpay your taxes. And then they look like a superstar, but the government's had your money all year long. Right. So having a tax advisor who promises you refunds or year in and year out gets you large refunds, to me, that's a sign that they're not doing a good job. I need you to always be somewhere around the zero. Either you owe a thousand or you're getting a refund of a thousand, anything much bigger and, and they're playing with your money. Uh, and that's really serious. I think the last thing that I like to tell people is someone who is keeping up with the times, someone who is a front runner by way of technology and by way of the law. There are a lot of old school accountants out there that are honest, great integrity. They work hard, but they haven't kept up with a lot of the changes in the world that we live in today with blogging and internet and, and all these AI and chat GPT. And so I think it's important to make sure you're working with someone who has kept up with the laws. So those are my three big ones. Someone who listens to you, someone who's not getting you huge refunds year in and year out and bragging about it. And then someone who's at the forefront of technology to make the experience as fantastic as possible. Yeah. Well, those seem like three good, good tenants there that if you, if you hit all three of those, it's kind of like, I don't see anything bad per se that can happen within that, that relationship. Uh, but for sure, if they're if they're not asking questions about you, uh, like I, I've had a very long relationship with my advisor, who fortunately I think does all three of the things that you just mentioned. But that first piece about really genuinely asking about you, about your goals, yes. it crosses. It's not just your business, but it's your personal life. It's this should really be an in depth conversation if they're going to be able to accurately and effectively help you plan for taxes over the long term. I see too many people drop off a package at their accountant's office in March, come back for it in two weeks time. And the person says, oh, you owe money. Great year, congratulations, sign here. You have a question? Oh, what's your question? Okay, fine, thanks, bye. Right. Um, and off they go and they're like, oh, I've got a great tax advisor. How is that great? That's right. a data processor. What about, what are your goals for the year? Are you buying real estate? Are you selling real estate? Are you hiring your kids? Are you buying it? What's going on in your life? Without those questions, you have a very expensive data, data processor. Yeah, and I think that that's just one of the, if not the most critical <laughs> partnership that you can choose as an entrepreneur. I mean, it's definitely, you know, top three. Um, right. So really, really important that you kind of measure twice, cut once when it comes to choosing a good tactic. And interview, like there's no shame in interviewing right. people. You know, I, I, I don't think it's like the good old days with your doctor where you just went to the guy down the street and that was it. There's right. all shapes and sizes these days and have conversations. Anyone who's offended by that is not going to be the right person for you. I think good it's point. important for us as providers and for you as customers 
to keep asking, make informed decisions and find someone that your gut says, yeah, I, I can tell this person my deepest, darkest secrets. Yeah, that's good. You, you have to click for sure. All right, let's go into our final question then. Uh, what pitfalls have you experienced so far, either you yourself in your entrepreneurial journey or ones that you've seen other entrepreneurs fall into that you think others should, should maybe know about? Well, I'm extremely fortunate. I've had great success. I've worked very hard and I've definitely had a lot of bumps in the road. <laughs> yes. um, I think the biggest one and my, and my ongoing issue is this idea of chasing revenue and this getting to a million dollars is, is where it's all going to be good or mm -hmm. getting to $2 million or $5 million. And I, even me, I spent many years chasing that million dollars. And you know what happened when I got there? I was unhealthy, miserable, and extremely stressed. Mm. This was not the promised land that I thought it would be. And so for many of my clients and many business owners that I work with, chasing revenue is not the answer. Chasing profitability is the answer. Chasing that bottom line, what you take home and building your personal wealth that's the answer. And that's where the golden nuggets lie. The biggest fallacy is, is chase that revenue, get to 250, get to 500, get to a million, and everything's going to be great. I, I don't see that for anybody. And I know it's hard to hear because social media and the internet have us all chasing this elusive revenue number. But I have never seen one person that gets to that revenue number and goes, I made it. I'm there. Right. right. Yeah, I think that makes perfect sense. It's funny. We all like to think about and talk about like uh, teenagers on social media and the unrealistic beauty standards that they right. have to. And yet that happens all over the LinkedIn all the time when people brag about, you know, how right. you can achieve, become a seven figure solopreneur or whatever. Right. How right. Do you I, I was having a toothache to? that I went to the dentist over and over again and they said to me, there's nothing wrong with your teeth. May we recommend a psychotherapist instead, <laughs> right? I mean, I was so unhealthy physically and mentally chasing this revenue goal. And really, you know what happened? My expenses went up with it because right. I was spending so much money to get to that goal. And now when I look back, I'm like, wow, at revenue of 500,000, I was taking home the same amount of money the same amount of money with and, way yeah. less client stress. Right. So for all the business owners now that I work with, my goal is how much money do you need to live on? How much revenue do you need to support that? Mm -hmm. And then where do we go rather than chasing this fictitious revenue number? I think that's great advice. 100%. I would rather bring home $100,000 at, at a $500,000 revenue. Right. Then bring home 120 at a million dollar revenue. And I see know. that every day. It's the bragging factor, right? It's a, oh, I have a seven figure business. I, I had a woman call me who did a launch, one of these online creators. She did a launch mm -hmm. and she called me and she said, Wendy, I'm, I'm planning to take the year off because I had a successful launch. I made a million dollars. I said, great. Let's do the math, figure out what you owe for taxes, what's left, and see if you can live on that. Yeah, she couldn't live. Right. She had less than a hundred thousand left after taxes from yeah. the fantastic million dollar launch because of the expenses involved. Nobody was managing those. Um, so that is yeah. by far the biggest everyday pitfall that I see in the entrepreneurial world. Well, and this is maybe a sticking point for me personally. I don't know if this bothers anybody else. I hate it when people say I made a million dollars. Right. No, you right. Didn't. <laughs> Right. Revenue is not the same as right. profit, right? Like, and what they should say, and I have fifty thousand dollars in credit card debt, and right. I barely squeaked by paying my taxes. Yep, don't believe the hype, people. Don't right. believe it. So that's that's great advice, uh, Wendy. Really appreciate you taking some time out of your day to to share these pointers. I think it really speaks to the fact that you you have been at this. You do have real world experience. You've seen some of these pitfalls. You know what to look out for how to be real with your clients, uh, just all, about, all around really well-rounded conversation and perspectives. So if you want to get in touch with Wendy, you can just go to wendybarland.com. I'll include a link down below. And again, Wendy, I appreciate you being a member of this community and uh, we'll see you around. Thank you. All right, take care.